You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Art Ambassador with your host, Gwenda Joyce. A former gallery owner, Gwenda takes artists through a step-by-step process that moves them past frustration and into comfort, abundance, and creative flow. So now, please welcome the host of The Art Ambassador, Gwenda Joyce. Hello, this is Gwenda Joyce. This is The Art Ambassador program, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm excited to be here for my first radio show. And I'm glad to have you here because we're going to be talking about art. We're going to be talking about artists, the art world, uh, the many facets of what goes, goes on in the art world. And most of all, we're going to be talking about artists and the challenges that they face to get their art out into the world. So many artists want to be better known for the art, and it can really be a struggle. I mean, I think, think struggle is is the normal for artists, and I think it's a shame that it is that way. Uh, some artists seem to rise above the struggle with no problem and have uh, an easier time getting their work out there, uh, f- making a plan and figuring out what they want to do and and developing an audience. Uh, what makes the difference between those who struggle and those who seem to find success more easily? When you walk into a gallery, do you wonder why that art is on the walls and yours isn't? Is your ultimate dream to see your own art there on the walls? Well, I believe it can happen. I love helping artists, and my track record of success helps helping artists is continuing to grow based on my experience in the art world, the fact that I owned a gallery for many many years and have been working with artists for a long time. And yet I know how challenging it can be. And I've been working as a mentor and an agent for artists, and I've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't. I've guided artists to achieve the success they want with a program I developed based on what I've learned, and it's called the YES program. Today, we're going to be talking to two artists who've done major turnarounds in their careers based on what they've learned in going through the YES program. We have Pat McIntosh from California here to talk with us, and we have Karen Barrow, who is from Florida. They are both reaching goals that they never dreamed of. I'm fully aware of the challenges that many artists face in creating the success they want. Many struggle to get recognized for their work, and I know it's not easy. But on the other hand, there are more opportunities than ever. And you would think that that means that it's easier than ever. But actually, it can be harder Sometimes you don't know which way to go, what's the best path for you, and what's really going to work for you, what's going to work for you and your art. There are so many choices and so many ways to be an artist today. And also, success means something different to everyone. So in my work with artists, I've developed a unique, unique, uh, unique approach that's transformational. It's based on growth and moving forward in your life and having having the guidance and the direction that's going to take you where you want to go. Now, as I said, my name is Gwenda Joyce, and I am the Art Ambassador. This is the Art Ambassador program. But you may be wondering who I am. 
I have been in the art world a long time, but maybe not in your corner of the art world. I'd like to tell you a little about myself. I come from a very creative family. I grew up in California with artistic siblings and a very creative and artistic mother. I didn't have the burning desire to make art that my siblings had, my brother and my sister, who are artists, but I understood that need in them. My mother was an artist, a dancer in her earlier life and a visual artist as she got older. And she was the one who introduced us all to the world of the arts. She expressed herself through her art. She wasn't a very visual person, but boy, could she dance, and boy, could she make beautiful things. I was more literary. I became a writer and an editor. I had a, when I was young, my husband opened a gallery, and I did all the PR and writing for the gallery. We decided to close the gallery that he had and move to Chicago and open a bigger gallery and bring art from California to that gallery. Chicago was a burgeoning art scene at the time, and it was really opening up. So we went there. We opened the gallery together. I was a partner. But five years later, our marriage broke up, and I ended up owning and opening my own gallery, the Gwenda J. Gallery. It was a very exciting challenge, and I loved having the gallery. But I quickly learned that with my background and my experience, I knew a lot about working with artists and enjoying art and ideas, but I didn't know about business. And I also learned that I had to quickly learn about business and create, develop some business skills or my gallery wasn't going to survive. And of course I wanted the gallery to survive and I wanted to continue to be able to show and support artists and bring the art out into the world and connect it with the wonderful art community that Chicago has and that was building and developing. It has a many layered uh, audience of the general public, great collectors, a lot of corporate support, a lot of business support. In Chicago, I helped put many artists on the map. It was really exciting. There was one artist who was originally from Cuba. His name was Paul Sierra, and he was one of the first Latin American artists to become prominent in Chicago. I placed his work in the Chicago Library, and it's still on permanent exhibition. I got him included in the first major traveling museum exhibition of American artists of Latino background. Uh, In addition, I had discovered works of numerous emerging artists and gave them shows. And I also became very much uh, interested in supporting the careers of prominent mid-career artists. At that time, mid-career artists were really facing challenges, and the focus was all on the young artists. And I wanted to make sure that I supported the artists who had shown the commitment and been making art their entire lives, and I knew would continue to make wonderful art, because I understand That art is something that you do for your life. You don't always choose it as a a career. It often chooses you. And maybe it's even a calling. My gallery evolved and I took on as a partner the man, the artist, who had been the director of my gallery. And we changed the name to Gwenda J. Addington. After 20 years, I ended up selling the gallery to my, my former partner, and it is now continuing as Addington Gallery. At that time, I wanted to do something different with my life. I wanted to take what I knew about the art world and turn it around and see how I could give back. So I sold the gallery and I moved to California and I started to become involved in the coaching industry. Coaching was becoming a more formalized way of supporting success. It's been very 
deeply held, of course, with athletes and entertainers, but it wasn't so common in the art world or many other industries, and it's now developed into something that's shown to be extremely effective. So I started the Art Ambassador, and now I'm helping many more artists, especially more mature artists, who feel that maybe the art world left them behind. So in a moment, we're going to take a break. I want to uh, be sure to let you know we're going to be talking more about the challenges artists face. This is the Art Ambassador Program. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Hello, and welcome back to The Art Ambassador. We're coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. So as we were talking about the challenges that artists face in building their careers, I want to bring back and focus on some of the issues that have come up for so many artists. The challenges are many. And we can start with the fact that we live in a culture that doesn't really value art. It's constantly in need. We are constantly in need of fighting to show our value. And it's yet so obvious that the arts add richness to our lives. Many people don't realize they need art in their lives, and often they have to be convinced that it's worthwhile. And naturally, that puts us on the defensive Some people have excuses such as, it's too expensive, I can't afford it, I don't see the value in buying art. And artists, of course, uh, know that artwork has intrinsic value. Uh, And we don't quite agree with people who think that uh, art is maybe something that has to do with being prestigious or decorative or commercial. So oftentimes there's a different kind of value system that causes a disconnect between the artist and the audience. The result is that it can unconsciously limit the artist's sense of artistic freedom and impede your progress. It can limit your ability to reach desired levels of achievement and recognition and having the kind of income that you might want. This can be frustrating It can also be that it might lead you to take on that myth of the starving artist. And when that kicks in, it can be demoralizing. 
There are other challenges that come from just the nature of being an artist. It takes time, money, creativity, and effort to be an artist. It's, and how do you fit all this into your life? You also may know that you're an artist and you've always been an artist, but you probably didn't realize that you also needed to be an entrepreneur if you were really going to be successful. I call this the artist dilemma. It's kind of the age-old problem. How do you balance making your art with the need to do the business side? And you know that the business side is important. Some people just never get around to doing the marketing, don't have the business mindset, and don't understand social media. And I know a lot of people who hate using the computer. So these things really get in the way. Other challenges that come up are personal issues that go along with being a creative person, such as procrastination and distractibility. It can often be hard to focus because we have so many interests and narrowing them down into one or two areas just might seem natural or right. We can get easily over, overwhelmed. Artists often get overwhelmed with too much going on, too many challenges, uh, too many pressures. And then that can make you feel stuck. And you, with too many things going on, you end up not going anywhere. Uh, there's also an issue that comes in with the fear of success. Success to many people can seem like uh, you're going to be the next Andy Warhol. And that could even be so well overwhelming that you don't even try to take the next step. Uh, there are other things that get in the way, such as uh, not knowing exactly what you want and not knowing how to go about it and not knowing how to make a plan. These are all really viable problems, and there are really a lot of them. So getting them out on the table helps. Getting them out and being able to identify, identify them and consciously have an understanding of whether they are things that get in your way can really help clear your path. These viable problems can be solved with a deeper understanding of the situation and a change of mindset. Replacing these problems and this, these sort of fears and anxieties that come into it with a prepared plan of action and an uh, understanding of the things that you need to know and say and do will prepare you for the opportunities that will come your way so that when the opportunities show up, you can make, your most, you can make the most of them. And the other thing that you want to do is have that right energy behind your work. You know, be excited about your work and share it with others. Have the sense of wanting to share it. So this, the solution is something that, to all these problems, is something that really can happen. And I want to just really encourage that in my message to you today, that solutions for these problems and challenges exist and they're possible and they are identifiable. Uh, I outline them in my book called Nine Steps to Artistic Freedom and it's a program, it's a, a plan that shows that you can go through nine steps, which really isn't that many, uh, to make your way through and overcome some of these challenges that will get in your way and you'll end up reaching your goals and clearing your path. You know, the solution starts with identifying the issues that are there for you, setting your goals, and creating a plan, working a plan and a strategy, and then, of course, following that plan. Uh, and along the way, learning what to say, who to say it to, uh, building an audience, knowing who your audience is, Taking it step by step really doesn't have to be so hard. I can be the first to tell you that my clients tell me it isn't that hard. So I want to answer the question for myself of what keeps me going? 
What keeps me excited about this is the fact that there is transformation that's possible for artists. I imagine a world where artists are supported, encouraged, and actually thrive, and where talent and creativity is put to use, showing us different ways of looking at things and different ways to solve problems. I imagine a world that is open to possibilities that can be created. I think now more than ever, we need solutions and we need artists in the world. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to learn how artists have addressed these issues and we're going to be meeting our first artist of the day. So stay with us. This is Gwenda Joyce, the Art Ambassador, and we're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Hello, welcome back. This is the Art Ambassador. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We're coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'd like to introduce my first guest to you, artist Pat McIntosh. Hello, Pat. Great to have you with us today. Hi. Thank you. It's good to be here. Great. Well, Pat is from Sonoma, California, and she's an artist who works with watercolor and pen and ink to commemorate the Day of the Dead, the ancient ritual of receiving the wisdom and noble values of our ancestors. Using images of weddings, picnics, and traditional family times, Pat reinforces the interconnectedness of humanity. She lived and worked in San Francisco for 40 years in an area that bordered the highly Latino mission district, and she became interested in the cultural aspects of the area, and uh, she participated in the Day of the Dead parade, which was really enchanting to her, and she ended up being so influenced by this that she has turned her whole interest into making artwork and skeletons in happy pursuits. And in her art, Pat wants to inspire us to cultivate the joyful nature of our shared human experience. She wants to make us happy. Pat, welcome. So glad to have you on the program. I'd like to start by asking you uh, uh, to go back to earlier this year. Uh, We met at an event where I gave a talk to artists on using internet marketing techniques. Can you tell me what impressed you most about the talk? Well, I think you hit it right on the head with the internet. You had mentioned setting up systems and online presence, and I thought to myself, gee, you know, 
how do I present myself? And then you said landing page and newsletter, and I thought, oh, wow, that's way beyond me. But what am I doing? What is my purpose? So that really sparked my interest. Well, tell me where you were with your art at that time and what made you sign on to take the YES program. Well, I'd recently moved to Sonoma, and I was spending more time trying to um, just logistics and where does my art fit in and asking myself all these questions and running around um, and realized that my lack of focus was was just carrying me away from my art. And with the high season coming up, the fall time when they celebrate the observance of Day of the Dead, I thought more and more that I could really use some help in focusing and guiding me to implement systems that would bring success. Well, good for you. It's good that you thought of that about six months in advance and you were willing to take the steps and move forward. When you were in, were in the program, did you have any personal breakthroughs that you can remember? Something that really caused a big change in you? Yes, it was a really hidden thing from me. Um, I started writing my short art statement about what my art was about and looked like and, and why I was um, expressing that. And you made a comment very gently. You know, it sounds like you're really afraid to say what who you really are. And then I realized, yes, I was hiding out. I was afraid to claim my you know, my, the thrust of my work and my mission for doing it. That turned everything around. I started noticing the places that I pulled back instead of moving forward. And it just made all the difference in the world. That's fantastic, Pat. And So tell us, how has that change and that shift in awareness played out for you in terms of your art? Well, I got myself involved with other artists that do uh, similar work. I volunteered at the local historical muse museum in Petaluma that has a big emphasis and a week-long festivities and occurrences and workshops and that kind of thing. And um, got myself a shop window to decorate with an altar or ofrenda and uh, ended up with three uh, building installations to do, one at a local winery and one at the traditional cemetery in Sonoma. So I'm busy. <laughs> and the yes, that's to, a, you know, that kind of that kind of energy kind of snowballs and I got a lot of card orders also. So that it, it really worked. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, it sounds like your involvement with your art is so different now than it was just just a short five or six months ago. That's so true. That's excellent. Uh, and I also uh, think that you have been getting a gallery representation or a show a store to put your art in. Has, do I recall that correctly, yes. that you've got a, a place yes. that when you were on vacation, you were able to uh, go to a place that was interested in handling art, your artwork? Yes, a uh, uh, long-distance um, outlet uh, that sells tons of wonderful and different and local artists' cards and artwork, as well as that kind of garnered a little confidence for me to make um, approaching areas or shops and galleries around here to carry my work. And in San Francisco in the Mission also, I've expanded my uh, venues so it's moving. That's wonderful. It's, it sounds like you've really stretched and reached out um, and, and changed your whole outlook. Uh, tell us, what do you have planned for your future? Well, another big jump. I am probably going to move to Austin, Texas uh, to live with my family. And uh, they've always been a great support system. And um, I think one of the biggest obstacles about moving far away is the fear of how can I do this, what will happen, I'll lose all my momentum. But I don't have that fear because I know how to create the momentum again. I know how more to represent myself. I know that 
the shortcuts to finding who would be interested in the kind of art that I do. And also just remembering a really important thing is that the, the, um, the artist and their representation are form a team. I'm not selling to somebody. I'm offering what I do to where I think it would fit. And they, they get to accept and uh, be part of it or I look elsewhere for a better fit. And it inspires a lot of confidence that um, I can use in a new area. So that's pretty wonderful. Well, well, Pat, I wish you the best in your new area. I'm so glad you made this turnaround in such a short period of time. I'm very excited for you. Uh, Pat McIntosh, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, Pat is uh, available uh, on the Internet at Freehand Cards. And this is the Art Ambassador. We're coming from coming to you from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and we'll be right back with another guest. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Hello and welcome back to Art Ambassador Radio Show. We're coming to you from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. Our next guest today is an artist from Florida, Karen Barrow. And Karen has a wonderful experience with making art that I'm happy to have her share to you today. Uh, And I would like to start by saying hello, Karen, and welcome. And uh, if you would, please give us a description about the kind of art that you make, your paintings, you make such unique and original work. Thanks, Gwenda. It's great to be here. Um, I do mixed media work. It's all automotive themes. And I start by taking my own photographs, I print them, um, and then I adhere them to canvas or sometimes car hoods and layer them with clear mediums and paint. Um, And it's a combination of digital art and abstract expressionism, and I call it digital expressionism. Well, you're, you're combining two different media, the abstract and the realistic, and that's a wonderful uh, visual challenge for the viewer. Tell us about the, the images that you use. I know you use the, the grid as the basis for your abstract form and grounding, but your image of the your, your image that you use is something that's near and dear to you. Uh, Karen uses the image of the car, uh, typically a high-end, uh, very stylish car. She uh, 
will have images of BMWs and Mercedes and some of the top cars out there in the world. And they are symbols for her. It's not so much the idea of the car that she wants to represent, but it's what the cars stand for. Karen, can you tell us a little bit about that symbolic aspect to your artwork? Yes. Um, you know, people, um, when I first started showing my, my work, um, the first series I did some small collages of Oldsmobiles. Um, and I was very intrigued by the feedback that I got from people. People started telling me stories about their cars the ones that they owned, the ones that they wanted to own, even those that they saw on the racetrack. But more than that, they started talking about people. They talked about their father that worked in the auto industry or the teacher that they remember had this cool red convertible when they were in third grade. They um, remembered the car they learned to drive on or the one they took to homecoming. And these stories kept coming and coming. And I realized that cars are like a historical touchstone in our lives and we connect people places and our personal history to the to our cars and this is the art ambassador we're coming from coming to you from the bbm global network and tune in radio and we'll be right back with another guest WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Karen, your art is so unique and cars are personal to us. And yet you were having a challenge with your art career. And this was about four years ago when we met and you reached out to me because you were struggling. What was going on for you at that time and what led you to contact me? Well, I had this body of work and I'd had some commercial success with it, but I was stalled and I really didn't know what steps to take next. Um, a colleague of mine had met you in California and knew that you had successfully coached other artists and helped them move their careers forward. So I contacted you. You ended up signing on for some individual coaching and then took the YES program with me. In the YES program, do you recall having any personal breakthroughs that caused a big change in your outlook? Yes, I think it was one of our very first sessions that um, we had, and you had looked at my work and suggested that I could take it in one of three directions. I could go more digital with repeating images, more towards assemblage with multiple auto parts attached to my work, or more towards pop art, where the iconic imagery of the car is boldly front and center. Um, center. 
But until that moment, I didn't realize I actually had three bodies of work going on with the same theme. And I had already moved, was moving towards the pop art um, style. So I knew the answer as soon as you said it. It was a, just a real aha moment for me. And because galleries tend to specialize, knowing where you fit in is so important. And I didn't know that at that point. And that, as a result, really clarified your direction about where you wanted to go with your career and how you wanted uh, your artwork to evolve. Yes. Yes, great, great. And, and as a result, you moved in the direction of gallery representation. But your artwork is all, all um, your artwork is about cars. And you were also going to a number of the race car venues in your area. And I think that's, that's where you take your photographs and get you know, some of the uh, actual personal contact with your particular potential audience. And you can develop relationships. Tell us how that works for you. Was that a good fit? And has that worked out well? Yes, it's worked out very well. Um, getting directly in front of your potential collectors is really rewarding. My contemporary take on the subject matter really resonates with collectors. And then repeat exposure and developing those relationships is the key to turning a fan of your work into a collector of your work. And that personal contact makes a huge difference. And I think it shows up in your work. Um, your goal over time was also to get gallery representation. And as I recall, you didn't know quite how to pr proceed, but the YES program got you prepared to submit to galleries. Do you remember some of the changes that occurred for you that uh, allowed that to be more, uh, to move you forward in that direction? Yes, um, very similar to Pat's experience. I mean, often artists think that galleries hold some magical key to their success and they feel powerless. But really, it's this partnership. As an artist, you're not just looking for a place to hang your work. You're looking for people who love your work, who want to promote it, and who believe that they can sell it. As an artist, it's up to you to find that match. And how did that work out for you? Did you find a match for, your, for you that you're happy with? I found a couple of matches, and they've been very, very successful. Um, Tell us about the, was, the uh, first time. <laughs> <laughs> you have a great um, story. I want, I'd like to have you tell us about that, that first gallery that you walked into where you thought it was going to be your ideal gallery. Uh, what actually happened? Yes. Well, I had done some research online, as you had recommended, and I had a list of galleries that seemed like good matches. And one in particular was big, beautiful, well-lit, and contemporary. I couldn't wait to go in. And I thought my work would fit in nicely with what they already had. It just seemed perfect. And I was so excited as I pulled up in front of the gallery to walk inside. When I shop for galleries, I try not to look like an artist. I want to see how clients and collectors are treated. So I walked inside, and it was beautiful. The owner was talking to a designer, and there were two more employees around the corner. But no one said hello. No one said, I will be with you in a minute. I was completely ignored. And I looked around for a few minutes, and the designer left, but still, no one asked if they could help me or even said hello. And then the owner went to talk to the other employees, and a heated argument ensued, actual shouting and cursing within 10 feet of where I was looking at artwork, and I just couldn't get out of there fast enough. <laughs> there is no way I would trust these people with my work. <laughs> No kidding. That's such a great experience. And I think actually you were lucky to have that because uh, your dream of, of ending up in the wrong gallery was clearly shown to you. And when I suggest to artists that they go into galleries and just get a feel for them, this is an, a, perfect, a perfect example of that. So what happened next, yes. Karen? Well, I was really disheartened and I had one more 
um, gallery on the list where I wanted to, to go while I was in that town. And it was, um, I almost didn't want to go because it was such a, you know, tough day. But I went and it was a small but friendly gallery with a mixture of styles. And when I opened the door, I was immediately greeted with a friendly hello and, you know, told that if I needed any help, just let them know they'd let me, you know, look at my leisure. And after a few minutes, I went back to the desk and told the manager I was looking for representation in the area and wondered if they had any suggestions. And they said they would love to represent me. Well, that's perfect. You didn't even have to do a sales pitch or anything. It sounds (laughs) like it came together organically, which is ideally what you want. And as I say, when you're prepared for something, good things happen. So, yeah. so now I understand you have another gallery that you've also worked with, and you've been able to develop a more collaborative kind of relationship with another, uh, the second gallery that you're working with. Uh, how is that working for you, and what have you learned in that process? Well, it's been really great. And a few months after this first experience, um, I ran into a gallery owner at an, a local art show, and they had seen my work on Facebook and wanted to try a few small pieces in the gallery, and I was really thrilled. Um, it's what I would call a reach gallery, one that I would not have tried to get into because of the caliber of work they carry. And eventually they selected some larger pieces, and then I took a risk. I invited them to join me at a car event that I had been doing for four years and had limited success with sales, and that was really a game changer. They say in business you should hire your weakness. Well, my weakness is sales, and that's their strength. So I've learned to be open to new ideas and their process, and this can be challenging because it does often go against your natural instincts, but it's really important to let it happen and grow. It must be nice also for you to feel like you're a member of a team and that you can contribute what you're really good at and the other members of the team contribute what they're really good at and then you're working together for the benefit, for the greater good, which is to get your art out into the world. It sounds like you've got a really good match there and I'm very happy for you. It's been great. Thank you. Now, I know you also get a lot of commissions for your artwork, and your artwork is unique because your uh, your subject matter, the car, is something that's so personal to people. Tell us about maybe some of your most satisfying commissions and the ones that really worked well for you and well for the client. It's been really a lot of fun because when you work with someone on a commission, you really get to know them and know more about their lives and their families. And um, the gallery had secured a very nice commission for me of a stunning yacht. And I had done a few yachts before, but this one was very special. So when it was finished and delivered, there had been a misunderstanding as to where it would hang in the house. And the collector thought it was too large to where they, to hang it where they had planned. However, they were so excited about the painting that they decided to have me redo it twice as large for another space in their home. And so it ended up being a really a win-win. And then later they commissioned two more paintings from me um, to do their cars. So it's been really, um, that was a very special, uh, a special experience. That sounds wonderful, Karen. And you, instead of having a client, it sounds like you have developed a collector. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's that's great. So has your art changed then as a result of working with the gallery? Uh, How has your art evolved maybe over the last uh, year or so that you've been having more, more challenging projects and different kinds of clients to paint, to, to uh, have end up with your work in their, in their homes. Well, Karen, let's 
we're going to take a break, and when we come back from the break, I want to find out more about how your art has changed as a result of some of these commissions that you've been getting, and also uh, how you've stretched yourself and entered a an event that you were able to go to last month. So we're going to be right back with Karen Barrow. This is the Art Ambassador. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Hello and welcome back. This is the Art Ambassador. We're coming to you on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Gwenda Joyce, your host, and I'm here with Karen Barrow, an artist who's had a wonderful uh, trajectory in her art career in the last three to four years. And we're learning about the exciting events that have occurred that have helped her stretch and move forward with her art. Uh, Karen, tell us about the most recent uh, way that you've stretched yourself and how you've you've taken your your work out of state as a part of yes. the art prize. Yes, yes. Um, I it was really exciting for me to be a part of art prize this year, and the venue that I showed at in Grand Rapids, Michigan, was um, the Boardwalk Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids, and they had a theme of time and transformation. And I had a painting of a um, Mercedes on a wrecked Mercedes car hood, and it just fit perfectly with their theme. And my coaching with you helped me go into the show with a great deal of confidence. It was really nice. Well, congratulations to you. You've had so many highlights, and I know more are on the way for you. Uh, It's been a real thrill to talk about your successes and your growth over the last four years. Uh, Can you – do you have any thoughts and advice for other artists who might might want more from their art careers? Yes, I think it's really important to – develop a team um, around you. And I also um, know that it just takes time. Um, you, you, th- these things don't happen overnight. The progress takes time. So don't give up. Keep at it. <laughs> That's great advice. Uh, the don't give up is really an important, important one. Uh, Karen Barrow, thank you so much for joining us here today on the Art Ambassador Radio Program. Karen's art can be seen at HW Gallery in Naples, Florida. 
Uh, her website, barrowart.com, uh, is temporarily down as a result of problems during the hurricane. Hope, hope will be back up soon, uh, but you can find Karen Barrow's art at hwgallery.com. This brings us to the end of the first Art Ambassador program, and I've had such a great time. I get excited when I can tell stories about, about artists and their successes. Each one is different, as you can see from Pat McIntosh and from Karen Barrow, who joined us today. You, too, can have your own story. And I had a thought when I was putting this together. I read the Sunday paper, and I often read the comics. It's like a warm-up. And Blondie caught my eye the other day. In the comic, Blondie spent about two hours intensively cleaning her house and getting ready for the cleaning lady to arrive. Uh, She ran herself ragged. She couldn't just show up. She couldn't show that she wasn't perfect, even to the person that she hired the cleaning job, to do the cleaning job for her. And it reminded me of a conversation that I had recently with an artist who had a wonderful show of her work, but nothing sold. She had worked really hard, and she was feeling depleted and demoralized. She couldn't even get back into the studio because she felt like it wasn't worth it. And in fact, she wanted to hide and just do nothing. So she hid out in her studio, wasted time, and procrastinated. She felt like nobody cared. I get it. You put your heart and soul into your art, and sometimes you wonder if no one cares. But coaching makes a difference. You get support for being who you are. I encourage you to take a look at the YES program. I'm opening up. I'm starting a new session in a few weeks, and you can find out more information at artambassador.net. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Gwenda Joyce. We're from the, here from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This has been The Art Ambassador with your host, Gwenda Joyce. If you're stuck in a creative world with little to no meaningful exposure and are looking to blend creative with the entrepreneurial spirit, listen each week for enlightening options and answers on Gwenda Joyce's The Art Ambassador. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.